Hello and welcome to the first tutorial for Atlas Tile Editor, also known as 8. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate pretty much the major features of 8. 8 is a program that is not a graphical design program. It's not a sprite editor. It's a way to take tile sets that you've either acquired through say opengameart.org or your own creation and use it as a way to make higher resolution tiles or even not depending on you know what you want to do you're not going to use this solely uh, to create tiles from scratch but instead you're going to have to have some source art uh, to to begin with and you can make that in whatever program that you like if you like photoshop you can use photoshop if you like the GIMP, you can use the GIMP, whatever you'd like. Uh, 8 is a utility. It is a art tool. It does allow you to do some creative stuff, but it's not designed to be an all-in-one solution in any way. When you first get 8, you have the launch button and you'll see these options. Showing the manual is helpful. It comes up with this error message, but it is working. It does show you the manual, and you can see that I have the manual open right here. If you skim through the manual, you'll get an idea of what the features are, and it tells you specific information about you know, what you're looking at, because there are some things that are done in my UIs that are different than other UIs, but for somebody who is used to it, it does make sense and it allows you to quickly do things with limited number of key presses and just using the mouse and things like that. So um, there's the concept of a workspace in 8 and a workspace is like a collection of things that you've done in the past and you can organize them in any way you'd like. There's a sample workspace which just which just has a bunch of you know samples in it. Um, but the manual is pretty useful and having that open is good. Now I have a lot of monitor real estate so I can keep my manual open in the same area that 8 is running but you know whatever works for you if you have to print it out or whatever you know put it on your tablet uh, you're welcome to just copy it out of there it's contained uh, right inside of your Steam Apps common folder where the 8 application lives. In addition to being in that folder, it also creates a folder in your documents folder and that folder contains your personal workspaces. You can edit the sample workspace, but anytime you uninstall and reinstall 8, you're going to lose that sample. And there is a chance that if it updates, you might lose changes that were made in the sample workspace, so keep that in mind. In the launcher menu, you've got launch full screen, which is your default and then you've got launch a windowed full screen which is sometimes more useful because you have to look at files and go to other applications and check things on your hard drive and whatever um, so windowed is is probably preferred in most cases but it's not the default and then there's the last option which just says launch atlas tile editor and that's because i'm not allowed to by steam change that description but what it really means is launch the 8 program in 1900 by 1080 mode so i have a 4k monitor and i have several other monitors and one of them is a 1900 by 1200 monitor which is not standard anymore they don't sell ones like that and some people have UHD monitors this is a way to open the 8 in a smaller window if you don't have um, or if you don't want it to take up all of the real estate and you just want to use it as a quick utility you can also just find the folder if you um, I'm gonna quit out of this menu if you right click there's the properties in Steam and there's local files and you can say browse local files and when you do this it opens up the window where 8 is located and inside of this is the data folder but also there's the 8 application if you right click on that you can click create shortcut and then if you right click on the shortcut and do properties you can actually go in here and change 8 by adding 
it says target here, you can actually tell it to open up by doing like a minus 640 x480. It has to be a, a standard resolution, so you know, probably a better size would be a 1024 x768 or uh, 1280 x1024, and this allows you to open it in an even smaller window. And then once you've done that, you can rename your shortcut to whatever you'd like. Let's say 1280 by 1024. Wow, that is that is some craziness from Steam there. You actually have to add one more thing to that. I, I forgot. Uh, you have to go edit uh, properties. You have to do like minus windowed space minus, and then the the resolution size. Um, Steam went crazy after that. Let me just uh, double click that one more time. Yeah, so you see I forced it into a sp specific resolution of 1280 by 1024. Alright. So, uh, you have the tiny green cursor and if you go in here you've got three options and options is one of them. Most of this stuff you will never need to touch. It's just left over from a game engine but you might want to turn off the panel shader effects or you know, just other stuff, pixel doubling. You don't really need to do anything in here. But it does make noise sometimes, so if you wanted to, you could mute it. And um, set up or change controls doesn't work yet, and maybe one day. Not like there's any controls in this. You just pretty much click, and that takes care of everything. All right, so pretty much click edit. Now you're in a list of workspaces, but there's only one workspace, so you would click on Sample Workspace. The reason why you have this window is so that you can work on different projects and keep your old projects. Now you're on the Workspace editing screen, and you can change the name. If you right-click, it actually deletes everything. But if you didn't want this to... well, so in the... In 8, nothing saves unless you tell it to, but uh, it will be that way until you start the application over. So if you make a mistake, you're going to have to exit. The way you exit 8 immediately is hit Alt-F4 and you're going to lose all of your work. So it's best not to make too many mistakes. Okay, but uh, you just put your mouse over the thing and then you can edit it. And that allows you to you know, make changes as needed. So that's what the point of this is. It's just to set up a title and a summary so you can describe it to yourself so you remember what it was you were working on. And then you click Edit. And it shows you again where this is located and, it, and the title that you gave it. And if you click this button, it's going to save everything that you've changed in the workspace. But what's actually in the workspace? Well, the tiles, the, the, the tile atlases or the Atlas library, things that you change in there that have to do with importing and any tiles that you create have to be saved with that button. Uh, there may be other save buttons in other places and they all save the whole thing. So all saving is is saving the whole project. There's no saving parts of the project. If you only need to come in and edit something really quickly and export it, you can do that and then you can quit the application and your workspace won't change. And really the reason that that's there is because I have like a couple of different game projects I'm working on and you know sometimes I want them to cross pollinate each other with graphics and other times I don't and the whole point is that I'm gonna come in quickly make something and then get back to working on the game which may involve using a tile editor or a map editor or some other program and this is just a means to an end I mean you can save your data and treat your workspace as your planning area and your and where you're going to make all your changes or you can not care so much about the workspaces and just import a bunch of atlases save the workspace once and then kind of use it as a utility to build new tiles when you need them and then you can export the big tiles and quit but I'm getting ahead of myself let's go ahead and take a look at the atlas library right so in the sample workspace you've got a lot of different tiles already set up and these are from a variety of different 
freeware sources are ones that I created and gave away, like for instance the ones used up here for the roguelike, or this one over here which I used in Fringes of the Empire, a game that I'm working on and have been for a long time. So what this library is showing you is all the sprite sheets that you have already assembled from other sources or from other games or from whatever uh, places that you've created them. In fact, I made mine in Photoshop, not in 8, although you could have. So you've got some options at the bottom of the screen. And each one also has an option. So this is an inspector of a single... There's like, you can see four on the screen at one time. And if you want, you can either use the mouse wheel, which is a lot easier, or you can hit these up and down arrows. Now this sprite sheet is one that I gave you because uh, if you're going to be editing and creating 2.5D with normal map shaders, uh, you're going to need these height maps to describe the height of various things in a tile. And it's sort of like making voxels. And I realize that it's kind of tedious. And so I've got a couple of different approaches that I might use in the future. But for now, I've actually made an entire game using this method. And you can reference that library from other uh, uh, tile sets that you're going to be creating in the future. So you can use that uh, over and over again. And you already have it. I've given it to you. You, you have all you need to, to make these 2.5D uh, light mapped normal map, parallax map, um, height map, <laughs> a lot of maps there, but basically you take a height map which is dark is low and and white is high and anything in between indicates a gradient. And so if you wanted to create a wall it would look something like this little part right in the center here. And I can show you some examples of that but you know there's some back, uh, there's some things about that that you have to realize like it has to match your graphics so if your graphics don't have like an odd shape or whatever that's not going to work and there's other ways to make height maps but this is just one way but it, it is helpful if you wanted to create a little voxely kind of world using 2d only and absolutely no 3d voxels or knowledge of 3d you could do that using this special black and white uh, height map that's up here in the upper right so there's statistics about each one, like how big the cells are and how many tile sets have been made from it and uh, where the image is located on your hard drive. In this case, it's a folder that's relative to eight. So it just says, or uh, yeah, relative to eight. So it's, it's saying data slash workspaces, but it may say something else if you have your stuff stored somewhere, uh, you know, in your documents folder or whatever. Um, and you can also, like, you have a couple of options. You can do, like I said, and use this special height map uh, atlas to build height maps on the fly for your tile sets, uh, for your walls, and for your floors. Or uh, you can make your height map in whatever program and then include it along with your atlas. And it's going to use that data when it exports your atlas tile so uh, let's say um, and, and I don't have an example of that really in the sample but let's say that you had um, I don't know this one down here the lower right and you had custom height maps for all of this stuff made elsewhere and you made a normal map out of that height map you could either include the height map or the normal map or both so you can take a height map and like run an algorithm on it and you can get a normal map out of the height map and all a normal map is is like a height map that has some pre-calculations in it that help a normal mapping shader work. So you can either use a custom one that you've made for your tile atlas, and then when you go and you make other tiles, it's going to use that. But that is only so effective. See, it's it's multi-pronged. You can you can do either of those things with it. Okay, we're back again. Uh, you know, early access. To me, means not complete, but I don't mean to have a tool that doesn't work, so I've gone and fixed some problems. Let's take a look. Alright, welcome back to 8. So, as you can see, I've created three different workspaces, so that's working again. Sorry. 
to go into this one. So we're going into the Atlas library feature. Okay. Assemble and import. Import multiple files. And select an area open. And you can see that I've made that button go away for a little while. It does come back. So we've imported these files and I think four seconds is probably too long for that delay, but the reason it's not there anymore is because uh, it was having a bug. So we're going to drop this file out and now we're going to go to the, so I'm, I'm fine with all the default settings. I've changed the names, by the way, of these two things down here to GL mirrored and GL nearest because they're actually texture mapping hints and have nothing to do with the mirroring in the file. So I will at some point soon update the manual on that. But uh, we want to... So mirrored me is like the... In GL you can mirror things automatically. So you don't have to have that in the file. And then GL nearest is the nearest neighbor scaling. So you're going to see linear when you do the first import. Uh, when you're doing the actual scaling, like here, this is linear, linear. Uh, but anyway, uh, just working on this area. This is a test, actually, in a way, but let's see. Yeah, works now. Great. Much better. Okay. So, so now we have a atlas in the library and we needed that before so you've loaded into your library so so you know you don't have to do anything other than just collect them in here you know the reason why you might want to collect them in here is just to keep track of them uh you know but also you know if you're like the artist on a team and you've got a thousand atlases you might want to have them loaded into Atlas Tile Editor in one of your sample projects so that you can edit and manipulate the, uh, you know, atlases and slice them as needed. It, it, it does provide that. So imagine that you're downloading a bunch of atlases or you're trading atlases with another artist or you've just collected a bunch of atlas pieces that you want to stick together you can use eight to like organize all that data into a useful library of atlas atlases with information around them you can slice the atlas if you wanted to get the files back out of them so it's a way to store your images in a usable format and also keep them in, in just a, another copy or a backup from whatever you're working on before and whatever other thing now from this screen you do have some options down here. So, assemble and import was about putting pictures together. Uh, import sprite sheet is about using an existing sprite sheet. So, there's going to be a little bit of redundancy here, but if I go into the 8 folder on my hard drive, I have a couple of test atlases that were generated by 8. So, I'm just going to load them. Remember when I click, uh, when you're exporting, you can click that export ping. And that's how I got these copies in here. And they just puts them in the Documents 8 folder. Right? And then you kind of open up that and, and now you're, you're actually importing the information. And you can just select rows and columns. I happen to know that it's like, what did I say before? 11 by 13. Something like that. So this proves, and then, you know, everything is good. Everything is good. We don't have any of these heights or normals. We don't. It's more of an advanced feature anyway. Don't need those. Uh, mirrored four-way is again GL mirrored, and the nearest neighbor. These are just tags for the image when it loads, so it's going to change the way that it displays it. And then you can copy it to the workspace folder, so you won't lose it. You'll have them all in your works workspace folder. So whatever workspace folder, whatever the name was of your workspace in the beginning becomes its workspace folder. And that's in the eight folder in your documents. So you can go there if you wanted to get the actual file and copy it out to a game engine, right? So let's just import it. Now, if that's, you can set your workspace folder to a copy of your game engine 
if your game engine knows how to navigate things like that but that's a little bit untested but it, it should work you know but it could be done anyway let me import the uh, atlas all right now it's no big surprise they are the same images just slightly different in slightly different order but you can see how you can make duplications and reorderings and and things like that and you can manually reorder them when you're importing them and it does affect the order in which they appear so let's create a tile set all right you're in the tile set menu now you've you've created a tile set it's called 23 that's just because it's the 23rd tile set or whatever so we're actually going to name it uh first tile set okay and you can even do first space tile set but if you got a programmer on your team having it as a single word allows it to be a variable name suggestion or uh it's just better to have no spaces trust me and no commas none of those things no periods just some sort of collection of alphanumerics that preferably don't even begin with a number uh, which is the same as the rules for variable names Okay, so we're going to create a tile. So you click the plus tile button. And now you're working on the tile. Now, if you see this whiteness in here, uh, that's an artifact of pings loading. But you'll notice that the individual images don't correspond to that. I do notice a little thing here where uh, the atlas that's loaded is not set up properly. That there are too many one direction and I think maybe not enough the other direction which to me indicates that maybe the numbers are flipped somewhere so let me let me back out of here and make sure that that's not the case all right so this is 13 by 11 cells but it's really 11 by 13 cells and if I go in there it's messed up now it's interesting when I click inspect and edit I can't actually edit the way it's sliced so that's weird uh, is this one correct yeah this one's correct so the one I created by assembling worked but the one I created through importing has a problem so I'm going to investigate that in the future all right let's create a tile set from this one we're going to call its reference my favorite tiles one okay so again the name alphanumerics doesn't begin with a number no spaces no periods no commas no question marks no exclamation marks hit plus sign tiles so this will create a tile in your thing and then you can go through this and, and kind of inspect individual pieces now uh, you can sort of fudge because you can change the color of things uh, you can sort of fudge the way that a tile is perceived so an example would be uh, here we go this is a chest of drawers is actually a lab bench if you can imagine like a, a high school science lab uh, the older style you've got the wood and you've got the drawers and that's what this thing is now you have these one two three four over here okay and what that allows you to do is select the different layers and it starts on three and when you move your mouse around the area you can see that it has a box that box represents four of the smallest tiles when it's on three when it's on four it's the tiniest tile and what do these things mean well each layer so there's four or five layers uh, the fifth layer is above and when you're in above mode you're actually not just you know it doesn't let you click here but it will let you draw a square or drop a square and so when you hit three and it starts this this layer when you're on layer three when you draw a square or drop a square it will occur above layer three 
Or perhaps below. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, it would be below. So it's below, below layer 3. So if you were drawing layer 3, you would click 4 and then use drop square to put things on layer 3. And then above is above 4. That allows 1 to have things under it. Alright, so what are these things? Well, this tile set is not a good example, but if you have like dirt and other transparent objects, or even just square tiles that you're going to be using to build a meta tile, you can use those dirts as squares that you're dropping, and you can manipulate those squares and things about those squares to create the effect that you're looking to get get from that and that way the same tile can be or the same atlas maybe it's like a hospital and you have all of the stuff without the dirt on it and then you have some little splotches as some of the tiles of, of like dust and you can put that dust together and create uh you know that sort of effect okay so i'll just demonstrate this without describing it any further so i'm going to click here in the grid to select one of the images this is the image uh, let me find a different image real quick. Uh, we'll use, uh, um, oh, we'll use this, this bed. All right. So the bed will be drawn when you're on layer one, you're on the biggest. There's only four of those four quadrants. That's one. So I can draw in four places. If I click two, I'm going to draw above one and it's going to be a factor smaller. So this allows you to create that sort of an effect when you're making tile work, right? And literally we mean tile work, like the tiles on the ground. It can be, you know, you can use this to do different things. You could, you know, use it to do cornering, you know, or one corner is that way. If you right click, it will remove that. And if I go back down to one, and if I remove that, that area will be transparent, because there's nothing there. And because these have transparency, these will also be transparent. So this this isn't really filling up the tile, but if I look carefully down here, it does appear to fill this entire tile with black. So it, it is drawing black there, even though that may be hard to see. So if you look over here, you can see a sort of a projection of what it's going to look like, and and you know just having uh, seen this maybe I'll add some some coloration behind this so that you can see that there's something going on behind it but it is transparent there's a little bit of a blue cast to the background of this so if I go then to layer 3 which is the first layer it starts out, out as this allows you to add lots of details so I'm just gonna add some details here and these what this drawing is is it's like a locker All right, or a, cabinet a metal cabinet and then I can put things like that next to it right these are just really tiny graphics that I was using in one of the games and there's a little arcade machine and uh, here we have like some sort of a like a metal ball I think it's a helmet actually of us because this is all the stuff that was thrown out of a spaceship when it got shot so you have like a little joystick right or a lamp or something and Here's like a boxing glove, you know, just crazy stuff, like a little chair. So I can create some detail. Now obviously there's no, there's no, uh, I guess a good feature to add to this would be to be able to draw like collisions on it, but there's really no point in doing that because most game engines like Game Maker have a way of doing that. But it's probably not a bad idea for me to go ahead and establish that so we have that kind of a standard setup. So... Uh, but anyway, let me continue this demonstration. So in the above, right, now you're in the above and I can't draw, right? What I'll do is I'll click on drop square. And what drop square does is, well, it's not working there. Let's see, draw square, drop square. Let's draw a square. So we're going to draw a square. So where I clicked was the center of where I'm going to place this thing. So if I wanted it to be like underneath the helmet I could click four and then click now it is on top that's weird I guess it's just above layer four so that's strange maybe it 
could be the other way. Well, it's up to the game engine ultimately because this stuff, well, it's not. I mean, it, it does it in here, but if you were a, uh, a game engine developer and you wanted to, to do this. So, so what's happening here is that uh, when you click after dropping a square kind of near the square, or rather if the square is selected over here, I guess is what's happening there, you can move it. So if you put something in the exact wrong place, you can just move it around. But if you click, that's weird, if you click off the square, it draws a square. So let's turn draw the square off. Okay, I guess it sometimes doesn't select it. So if I select it and then click, I move it. I see what's going on. And sometimes it leaves one selected. All right, whatever. So this is your list of, of objects. So if you do the drop square, you can also select them. Uh, turn off drop. I'm not sure why they don't turn off exclusively, but if I turn off drop square, uh, I can just drop a square at the location. So this is kind of like if I needed to add additional detail levels, but that doesn't work on this level. But if I was on... Wait, that doesn't make sense. So draw square, drop square. What does drop square mean? Well, drop square apparently makes it as big as the one that was selected. So you can place objects of a similar size. So I think drop square could be changed to like uh, last, or maybe it, yeah, I don't know, last created size or lock size. Maybe lock size is better than drop square I guess sometimes you think things when you're programming that maybe don't make sense later so so drop square is really draw of the last size now you can just keep doing this right and if you right click nothing happens but if you have one selected like 11 and you hit the X it does remove whatever 11 was so this big one over here on the left is one of the first ones so I'm gonna remove that one so wasn't that one but it's one of these first ones and you just keep doing this huh uh, just keep doing this it's not doing it or it must be doing it yeah. weird there's a lot of them I, mean, I drew a lot of squares it's not I don't think it's leaving the right one though so if I if I click so when you've got one selected and I click that I'm going to be able to rotate that around so I can manipulate what's already there. I see these are on different layers and stuff. I don't know where that big one is. So it's hard to find them, but you know, the idea is that you can always just create a new tile or delete them all. Uh what it is so if I have one selected and I click again I'm gonna be manipulating it so drop square what that does is it locks in the previous size as the size that you're gonna be using and you can place it at that size so if I wanted I could repeatedly click and draw a pattern all right but generally this is not a good example because you know there's no dirt I'm not adding dirt I'm just putting filing cabinets on top of filing cabinets here but you get the picture like if these filing cabinets were little dirt tufts, you could remove them or whatever. Now, you can bake this out to a tile, but it actually, you don't have to. It, it builds it into the text file as that is the workspace atlas information that you have. It bakes that in as a... Uh, um, like a, a, a VBO description. So... You should be able to have somebody who has an engine that makes, that can load this atlas and treat it well. You know, it can also load in addition to that more metadata that will allow you to recreate this drawing without using an image file, with just using a VBO. And that's really the innovation here that maybe people don't realize is that this is just a, a specialized format for making a game engine that does this. So instead of drawing a, a, a you know, like 
it's like a prefab. Like uh, instead of drawing an image, you could draw this using a VBO. And you can see how it sticks out over the edge. No big deal because the VBO would do this too. So that's basically what we're getting at here. Like this is a very simple idea. It's a grid with multiple layers that can describe to a VBO algorithm to how, how many squares and where they are and if they're on or off. Kind of like a little voxel, but a, a 2D voxel. So you have, can build up a little model of graphics. And uh, let me show you kind of something a little bit better that is um, in the sample project. That's, that is a different example. But if you click save, it's going to save your workspace. And if you keep hitting the back arrow, you'll get to here and then go back and go back. And now you can go to a different workspace. So then I'm going to just bop into this sample workspace for a little bit. And we're going to do something with a more traditional tile set that I didn't make. So in this tile set, we'll, we'll call this demo tile set. You can add a tile. All right. Now, this one has a ton of tiles on it. And in fact, I think it's been sliced the wrong way. But for some reason, I had to slice it at this size. Yeah, because that's the smallest size. So on this keyboard, there are arrow keys. And you can move around this grid to grab different options wherever it was that you clicked. And it is kind of hard to see where that is. But I don't know what color to make that. I could make it pulsing, I guess. Maybe that's a good idea. But, uh, and I'll go back over this and put some of these ideas in, but you can basically, you know, that way if you have a multiple tile thing, you can still build it rather quickly. So I'll just de demonstrate that. If I hit the left and right and up and down arrow keys, I can get all of the graphics that I need that way I got sidetracked by pop-up window Ugh. all right let's get that mouse back in the right place okay so now we can just sort of get all of the individual graphics and stick them together and you can still build this this tree object even though you uh, you know, with the arrow keys. And then you can go to some other object, like here's a thing. And now you can use the arrow keys to kind of go around this object. Right? And, you know, these are all related. Like, you can create a, a piece of a level with those. Those are like side... I think this is like some side view stuff, but still useful. So, here we have like a floorboard. Alright, here's some grass. Let's go around the grass. Now the grass is an, a different size, so I'm not really sure like who made this atlas. Maybe I assembled it randomly from a bunch of things. I'm not sure, but there's different scales here, and you can you know you got some words, some random stuff like a table, uh, some books. All right, here we got another area. So let's go to two, right? And two level two is behind and bigger. So I can make like a little island here, right? And now you have this this island, right? Um, you know, little little pathways and what have you. Uh, yeah. So you have like some different options, you know. So so we're gonna draw this out, and make it uh, make it the way we want to. So. I'm going to go even down a further level, right? So now, even though the scale is different, I mean, it depends on what your input data is, but there's definitely some opportunities here to, uh, got to find the whole tile. All right, so I'm just showing you how you can put some detail there, and then you go up to level four, and in the areas where you had like a scaled up one, you could, you know, put some other details in there, and because you have all, 
all of the pixels you would ever want. It's not a good example. Let me find a better. Here we go. A little metal wall. Right. So it's it's, it's totally up to you as to how you interpret these things. But this allows you to kind of create uh, this stuff. And then if I go to drop square, let me pick something appropriate. Here's a f like a flower. So we'll go uh, uh, draw square. So that didn't work because their width and height is zero. You can manipulate the width and height by just going in here. You hit control, shift, or alt, it changes the rate and the direction and, and other facets here so there we go so you've got that now you've got that thing there maybe you want to move it around a bit so we'll just try putting it somewhere else uh, we can delete number two we don't need number two all right so we'll just move yeah now we're just drawing it so that that's not so again right click deletes things on the layer you're on uh, let's go to draw square and that's weird why did that not work let's get rid of that delete that one all right uh, not sure what the back does what's that do reset uh, so i can move this this way there's an X and Y value here. I can click the up and down arrows on that, and I can move it that way. Uh, looks like there's a little bug there, so I'll have to fix that, where the up and down is on top of... Or I just hit the wrong button, actually. Alright, so, you know, that doesn't make a ton of sense, like the way this is looking, but I can make it a little bit smaller. Maybe it'll make more sense. It looks like the the width and height can go negative here, which means that it will invert the image or flip it 180 degrees in one direction or another. Here we can just rotate the angle if I click this. There's a little at sign which sets it back to a specific value. Or I'm sorry, that's random. The zero will set it back to zero. The at sign will randomly turn it around. And then there's left and right to like fine tune. And you can hit Control Shift, right? Uh, yeah, Control and Shift change the rate at which uh, that changes, I believe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Control Alt and then click that. That moves it pretty quickly. Control and Shift makes it move very, very subtly. Control is just one degree. Alt is a half a degree. Nothing is a tenth of a degree. So control alt will make it move very quickly. Alright, or you can just click freeform. Alright, there's that. What else we got? Um, at this point you can bake it to a ping. And when it says pings up there, it's really talking about if you have a height map. And I'll demonstrate a height map in one in the next video or something. But So this is the editor. In, in its basics, uh, there's set cell chords, text chords. Uh, I, I'm not sure what that does. So there's these text chords down here, and I believe these ones at some point were copied from up here, but are now set as the cell. What's it set to? I don't know what that does. I'll look into that. We've got left and right as well, right here, to make it easier to move it around. So those are all the features of that. Now we have sort of this thing. Um, let, let's create another tile. I'm gonna save this one. It's called tile zero. You can just go down here and hit delete and then type something else. We'll call it like river walk. I mean, it's up to you. Or you can just leave it as a number. Save, back. All right, now we've got our river walk tile. Let's create another tile, okay. And this time we're going to make an interior. So I'm going to go to the level. Th well, uh, yeah, let's turn off drop square. All right, now you can see the square. Now let's go down to two and let's let's start drawing in here. Okay. And you can see me making like kind of a cool wall out of these wall parts. 
Applied some metal to this wall. Alright. And we'll add some texture. So you can see over here, like, this is perfect for, like, a Wolfenstein 3D kind of, you know, raycasting engine. You could use this for a cartoon FPS. Uh, you could use it as a prefab for, you know, the ground of something, you know, an RPG maker or GML. You could use it as a background. You can use it as a as part of an atlas that you're constructing so that you can then rehash it a second time and, and you know, generate whatever you want from it. But one of the cool things about this particular setup here is you can pick a height and then it's going to let you pick a height from you know other tile sets that you have created so when you're doing this you are referencing the uh, the sample project because the sample project has like that special tile map let me go back and point it out again in the sample oh, there we go in the sample project there's this number nine and number nine tile set has some wall height maps already designed so if I pick this one and you can kind of see there's like a little bit of a picture of your wall behind this you've now got that that is your height map and you can click this button up here that says select this tile as height map and return so that's special to the height map feature of 8. 8 comes with this baked height map texture thing that is is made for 2D games that are low res. You wouldn't need this if you're going to use it in a... Uh, you know, you would have a different type of tile map. You can make a, a normal map in a different way uh, if you're building a FPS game, right? So you can use just the normal mapping feature of... Uh, Adobe Photoshop where you can convert the the color drawing to a black and white then you take that black and white and you feed it to the normal map generator and there's ways to, to get that to, to work right and that's one way you can create a height map for this tile but what this allows you to do is you're creating a 2.5D where this is the bottom of the wall and this is the top of the wall and the white is like a flat area on the top level of the wall so when you do shadow casting on this and it's drawn on the screen as the normal map input this sort of an engine which could be a 2.5 D engine like the ethanon engine ETH anon engine uh, this generates a, you know, an effect that makes it look like it's in 3D. Okay, and you can use Y sorting, which is a standard method like Zelda and other things, uh, to to create the illusion of depth. And I do this in fringes, and you could do this in in any game. I, you know, fringes looks a certain way, but you can make it look however you want. So there's different ways that you can do this. I think one little issue in this part of the program that might need to change is that when you click height you can only click and select the height from the sample workspace you can't pick the height from the same workspace unless I wait did I enter the sample workspace so another thing would be to have this you would want to include this atlas in your own workspaces or create duplications of the atlas that's from the sample workspace in your atlases and that's a manual step you would have to go in and get that file from inside your local files and then put that inside your um, your your tile sets for your atlas workspace wow uh, so there is a way to, to use it in yours. All you have to do is copy it over and, and, and experiment with how to use it. But this is the correct one for a wall that is up and down. 
and then it assumes that the game engine is going to take this tile and draw it very lightly over the over the map and that's that's a special thing that I do to create a little more detail but this would be fine it's just everything looks kind of flat if you don't have that drawn over it that's why when you go to the select a height map area and you go in here and you finally select a wall and any of these will work this is a smoothed wall okay it has a smooth the other one had like the it almost looked like a vent it would look like a vent this one is is more smooth and realistic but uh, it has uh, some artifacts because it never gets truly white before it turns white anyway uh, it's it's like you know a fine option so if you'll see over here I actually drew the tile there and that's what the engine should be doing so if you do want to implement this in an engine that you're working on and you can do this in a variety of different engines there's a uh, in my GML Pro list of shaders one of the shaders I provide is a normal mapping shader so you could use this for your normal map input and then uh, you know you can also bake the normal maps and and the way you would do that is you would export the height maps for this tile right when you go to export the tile when you bake the tile set which is this button up here when you do that uh, it lets you bake out also the height maps and I believe it automatically converts them into normal maps for you so you, when I do that I include this slightly drawn like very light version so that it adds the illusion of cracking and and things like that all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click this uh, select this tile button I actually think it's probably a you can hit the back button but uh well you can edit this tile here and so I'm just letting you know like you're editing another tile when you do this and the other tile is in you know this other tile set that you've bopped over to when you hit back it goes and you hit back again and back again you end up at your original tile with no changes but if you click here and then you go there and you select a different tile and you click there it draws or it changes it and goes back to your original editor so you're in your original tile and you're just creating a reference here but you could if you wanted to uh, hit the X button click or clicking the X gets rid of it but if you go into the this you can actually just create a new tile so I'll give an example of that let's say uh, in this case I didn't like any of these tiles right so I'm just gonna go plus tile okay and I'm gonna just draw it right now so let me uh, let me get down to, to one because I can fill a lot with one I'm gonna look for the right kind of fade here because I have a lot of different options this is a this is the wrong direction so where is the other direction? It's interesting. It's the wrong direction. Uh, should flip that over, I guess. Um, we're gonna go up here. So there's four of these to get to white. So I'm just gonna go to layer two. And since there are four by four in layer two, I'm using the arrow keys now along with the mouse. So I'm going to draw all the way across, then I'm going to go up one, alright, then I'm going to go up one, then I'm going to go up one, alright. Well, that actually looks fine, and the reason why it's not fully white here is because it's drawing the other tile on top of this so that you can see it. So, you have to look at this preview on the right, but then if I wanted to I can give it a flat top by picking white going to level four that's not the right one though Let me... this one maybe but it has an edge I can tell alright here's a good one alright now I can just draw across the top in white remember right click gets rid of things so you've got this uh, top and that that means that light will not pass through 
this direction, right? So anyway, select this tile. Yep. So that's how you create a custom height map for a wall. Now, on this wall, there's a little lip here. So I'm going to go to this again. And I'm going to locate the one I was editing. And I'm going to add a lip by creating a... So if this is 4, the same 4 is scaled to many over here. Like, I don't even know how many. Maybe like 30 or 20. At least 30, I think. So you have 30. What you have here in 4, this... What I mean is like from black to white, the fade zero to to a hundred is is stretched over a larger surface area, so you have more variations and subtleties. So you pick maybe one in the middle, because you know that it, from top to bottom that lip occurs in the middle. And so you pick one that's in the middle that's maybe slightly raised, so slightly lighter than it should be, and you can draw across here. Now I've noticed that three is not small enough so I'm gonna to go to four on this and I'm gonna draw across here using this color alright and it's actually a little bit too bright so I'm gonna bring it down a notch and redraw it and you do have to click for every draw uh, but that's just because you need to be careful with what you're doing alright so then I need to go a little bit under that and I need it to be half transparent. I don't know if I have the right one, but it looks like these have a half transparency on them, although they're on the wrong side. I mean another op so so these up here do have that. So so another option, if you go left and right, I think it gets darker. Again using the arrow keys helps you navigate. So that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm comparing what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at this and I'm comparing it in my mind to this bar that I just drew. And I'm trying to match the color in my mind. And that looks pretty good. It's a little bit lighter. There we go. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll fix it. But now I can draw across. And it's actually a little bit lighter than it should be. So we're going to make it a little darker. And you can actually make it different. Like you, you don't have to make every single one the same color. You could use left and right to variate very create variations or variate it so now you have this little thing and what that allows you to do and I think there's actually some other stuff I could do in here like there's a lot of details you can just go for broke if you want uh, but like I have these that have holes in them of varying heights and you've got like parts of that and stuff like that. What, what we need now is one that's split in the middle, and I don't know if I have the right one for that. But there's, there's different ways I could fake. There's always some way I can get out of it. Let me put it that way. Like, for instance, uh, well, well, whatever. It's good enough as it is. What it allowed us to do was, was for that lip, it created a little raised area, so when the light hits it, it's going to make it look more three-dimensional. All right? Another thing we can do is go over here and find like the one that's one darker and go down a layer, right? Maybe two layers. And we're just going to make this part a little darker than the other part. And in fact, I'm going to do that. So that'll make that look like it's set in because it's darker. It looks like it's like light will, will be hitting it, but it actually doesn't look. Um, well, yeah, that would be the right one. So we want to go down one. But I can I have a couple of other options, so oops, so I don't have to. Now, see what's bad about this one is that it has a little lip on it. You can make your own one of these. I mean, whatever you want. Um, there we go. So that'll give it kind of the illusion of being set in. And because it's not ramped in the same speed as the other one, it'll it'll just light will hit it differently. And once it's converted into a normal map, you'll be able to see that in your game engine. So it's just a way to do that. That's what all of that hype map stuff is for. And you know, we picked it. There it is. You can see for some reason that's a little whiter in here. I'm not sure why that's a different color. Maybe I don't know. 
maybe that's transparent there. Strange. Let's let's take. Or I don't know. Oh, uh, well, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like that. Well, let me click select this tile and return. That's weird. I'm not sure why it's white here and not in the other. But it does sort of follow along with uh, this this ridge and lets you create that kind of illusion as well. I'm not sure what the white is. If you click uh, bake to pings. Now it's going to have you write it. You can name the tile. So you're only doing the one tile. So we'll call it tile123. And it's telling you here, it's going to be called tile123.ping, tile123 underscore hm, and underscore nm. One is the height map and the other is the normal map. And then I'll export now. Now I can do that as many times as I need to. It doesn't ask you if it needs to be overwritten. But if I go to my 8 folder, so let me bring up my 8 folder. Okay, so here's my 8 folder. And you'll see in my 8 folder I've got a normal map for this, and I've got a height map for this, and it's called tile 123. And we'll just take a close look. So this is the... Yeah, great. Alright, so um, you can see there that's that's the normal map that was generated from the height map. So if I bring in the height map, yeah. One second, I got a call here. Or, I guess I got a freaking message. All right. So you've got this kind of thing. All right, so that covers that. Now, if you want, you can export them all. If you go to bake tile set, <clears throat> you go to bake tile set, it's actually gonna spam everything. I don't think zip it works. Um, so I'm just letting you know. So this will let you bake all of the tiles out. And it's just showing you that there are these two tiles up here and there's this one big tile or atlas and it's saying that these tiles are generated from this atlas and you can add the atlas in so if you wanted to use that method I was talking about it's gonna write it out to JSON so that you can if you want in like Pixie.js or you know in your own game engine or Ethanon engine or whatever engine you do have this JSON format that you could convert into whatever file format you want that has all of the data to rebuild the tiles from the atlas so that's what that's about. And then you've got all tiles from this tile set, you know, pretty much obviously. I'm not sure if you can you click these things? No. Well, of course you would want them all. Why would it Oh, cuz you're just ex cuz you don't click this, you're just exporting the JSON file and including the atlas. And that's all you really need. But if you click all tiles from this tile set then that's you know doing everything like giving you all the files each individual one I'm not sure to zip it it seems to think that it'll zip it so it's very possible let's see let's see what happens let's see what happens well that that did not last long so let's see let's see what happened there uh well it wrote the text files and it didn't write the tiles but it did export the JSON document and it did export a JSON document describing the atlas itself so it actually did not export all of the individual tiles that's a separate feature somewhere else so let's see where that one is so if I go back there's an export tiles button Did that work? What did that do? Nothing. All right, maybe there's a maybe there's something coming there. Then uh, let me go back one more level. I'm gonna save it. So you can add additional tile sets there. Uh, part of the reason it may not be there is because you're doing it in the sample workspace. I'm not really sure. Let's find out. Let's go to one of our own. 
right, we're gonna edit this Atlas library. We're gonna uh, import a sprite sheet. We're gonna pick a source image. We're gonna bring in the ABC atlas. We're gonna adjust the width and height and columns and such. All right, we're gonna click import atlas. We've imported the atlas. Now we're gonna go inspect and edit. We're gonna see that this is effed up. We're gonna go back. <laughs> we're gonna cry. We'll fix that soon. Uh, let's see. I feel like I fixed these problems and forgot to release it or something. All right. Now we're gonna go to uh, image or export. Oh, here we go. So when you go to export from this menu, that's where you can export all the tiles. So that other button needs to lead here and that's what's going on with that so this is gonna let you pick an output folder you can create a new folder we'll call it my other output okay put it in the wrong place actually uh, let's put it on the uh, the desktop make my other output all right and we're gonna do okay Okay, pick output folder. We've got that. Now we're going to check the tile size. You can have it scale them as big or small as you want. I'm not seeing any tiles because we don't have any tiles. So let me go back here. Let's create a tile set. Alright, we're going to add a tile. We're going to draw some craziness. Just some crazy stuff. Okay. We're going to pick a height. We're going to create a tile set for height. We're going to go into set tile set pick that picture I'm not sure how that I'm not sure what I just did let's go back pick height create tile set 27 uh, yeah oh created a tile set of the same yeah we don't want to do that so you're gonna have to have your height atlas already imported and set up as a tile set let's just draw that stuff pick height we'll go into our tile set we'll pick the same picture which you can do actually a lot of the time uh, and then load into Photoshop and edit it or whatever it takes to get to that height map then you can um, all right, we're good here we're gonna click this button okay now we got the height map set up yada 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 save it go back uh, now we're gonna go to X or we're gonna go back again back one more time we seem to be buried all right Atlas library Here's the atlas. We're going to export tile sets. Okay. We're going to pick the output folder. We're going to click my output, my other output. All right. Now it's got the atlas. It's saying that there's 26 tiles and one, or the name is 26, and that there's one tile there. We're going to click that. That adds it to the list. And I believe we can pad it at this point, or we can set the target tile size, and now we can export the pink tiles. There they are. And that allows us to, so we have the height map and then the normal map. Anything can be converted into a normal map. Uh, if you're doing a top-down engine and you want to use a normal map, it's actually even easier. You can just do stuff like I just did. But regardless of all of that, we exported all those tiles here so you couldn't do them through those other locations only here and then I believe if I click export down here it's gonna select all of the tile sets and all the tiles once again so it all ends up in the same place I guess that's all the same stuff uh, just different ways in and you know you can it automatically generates the file name so you can go down here to manipulate how it's gonna export those files all right then there's the image utility folder. This is a folder that is baked into 8. That just comes with some freeware or open source programs that I make no claim to own and that you can get elsewhere. But if you've never used them, this is a great way to get get to know them. And one of them is GFIE. There's Gluit, which is another assembly uh, utility for assembling things. Uh, image Resizer, Image Magic. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of. So they're distributed, but I'm not. I haven't modified them in any way. 
And then uh, go back. Now we can go to Atlas Tiles. If you don't want to even, if you have enough atlases and you're just building tile sets, this is a way to just build the tile sets. It's strange to me when I do new tile set that it's doing that. Why is it doing that? Oh, because there's only one. So, you can, so the reason why you can add tile sets here is to create variations. There's nothing that says that you can't pick the same atlas. I believe the reason why it's not a lot, giving me the chance to pick the atlas is because there is only one atlas. So therefore it automatically picks the one atlas. And that's because you could have a workspace that's de uh, des designated only to a single atlas. So you don't even have to you know, have a collection of atlases. You could just make a whole bunch of tiles from a single atlas and an entire game could be made that way. So there's other ways to interpret the editor, of course, and there's all sorts of hacks and things you can do in there. But that's basically all you have for so, so far. Let, let's talk a little bit about the things that are coming. Uh, it's currently mid-December 2018. I don't know when these things will be ready. I will try to, over the break, spend a little bit of time on ATE, but I I have other things that I'm working on. One of the things that I'm going to spend time on is the mulligans. Uh, maybe the presentations as well. I'm not sure about that. And I also want to maybe work on the 3D Atlas blocks. I can't work on all three of those things, so I'm probably going to pick one of them. And it might be the mulligans, or it might be the 3D Atlas blocks, or it might be the presentations, <laughs> which is any of them. So one of them is going to become the focus, and then that's probably all I'll be able to get done uh, by the time I have to go back to work. So uh, that's my short little you know, thing I do at the end of the year is work on eight. I thought I was going to work on it more often during the year, but it was just so busy this year that I just couldn't do any of it. So then uh, once you've, you know, if you want, you can always open the folder to get to your workspace and you can take a look at the original files here. So you do get some JSON output, but you also get our proprietary format that looks like this. It's kind of like a properties file kind of like JSON, and kind of like a poser file. But it's really, poser is an old, you know, 3D character creation thing that's still out there and they still make. But uh, there's, you know, I, I make it, so I'm actually the lead of it. But there's, uh, you know, stuff you can do uh, to, you know, get data out of these things and convert them. It's not too bad. Um, and if not, it does export JSON data that looks like this and if I zoom in here you can see that it just is like there's where the texture is that's the name and you might have to edit some of this and uh, it doesn't have any I'm not sure what the elements and centers things does but uh, it's documented I already documented it and here we have the demo tile set that allows you to you know that's obviously what we named it and in there are all of the, it's all the data you're going to need to regenerate these tiles. So, uh, briefly, if we go through this file, you've got your name of the set. Now you've got your tiles list. Here's your first tile. It's called Riverwalk. You remember what it looked like. This is the grid that describes it on level two. This is the grid that describes it on level one. The number refers back to uh, a, uh, uh, that's, really, that's a good question. Where does that refer back to? Oh, it refers back to the tile in the set. So if, if we open up, if we look at the tiles, wait, what? No, I think it's something else. It might be a coordinate. What is that? 1559, but it does work. Some sort of an ID. Let's see. So, uh,. uh I don't know. It these are some sort of unique number that refers back to like the tile number or something like that. Uh yeah. It could be it's some sort of encoded X Y. What is that? One five five nine. Well, uh, I'm baffled. So the atlas is this, but where's the... Oh, wait. Oh, I remember. This was a very big... Okay, I believe that's the number 
from top left of the grid position. So it's X plus Y times width of that position. So one would be in the upper left, probably. Okay. So, so when I say negative one, that means there's nothing there. And then the number corresponds to one of them. So you can see that there were thousands of individual tile options in that single huge atlas. So you could do all sorts of things in there. Um, then there's quads. Quads are those drop squares or whatever. And they have, so there's quads, there's quads one, two, three, and four. And those allow you to place them in different locations. Um, you know, like on top, based on the layers. And you've got X, Y, and then a width and height, which is a fraction because it's it's of the whole tile. So point, so if you're drawing your tile, see these are tiles, right? And you're drawing them on the screen. If you're drawing them in an area that, that is the unit's value of, uh, you know, 64 by 64, then 20% of that size uh, should be the, which would be like, what, eight or something, or even less than that, maybe four. Uh, by four or something like that. A is the angle in degrees. Uh, I is a meaningless value. Uh, TC are your texture coordinates. So these refer back to the atlas. So the texture coordinate of XY of this quad is uh, 0.671875 and that's where on the atlas it will choose the pixels and anybody familiar with OpenGL will know that. Anybody familiar with texture coordinates will know that. And then uh, TCB is like for other text cords. I guess it it wrote all those out, but there's there's I don't know. Anyway, and then there's uh oh I know why, because in this case it's a quad, but this could have written out a more uh, arbitrary polygon. So it would still be a rectangular rectangular, but it actually wrote out. Uh, just the quad version of it. So it didn't turn on the feature that allows you to set the individual points of the corners, which is probably something that will come along eventually, but I didn't see it as being that important. Uh, but that's why these other values are there. And if you deleted the TC, B, D, whatever, then that would be absolutely fine because uh, they're not being used. And then tint A, B, C, D. There's actually a way to tint the corners independently, and I haven't in installed that yet or, or developed that. So, uh, then you've got the name, you know, and then the next tile. Then you've got your AT set. That's your Atlas tile. It's at set nine at tile 33. Um, you know, whatever. That's just so you can identify it. And, uh, yeah, so that's all of them. There's only two in this file. And, and it's one set of tiles. So that's what this is all about. Flip X, Y is obvious. And, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't really matter. It's usually in this format. Okay, so mulligans are coming. Uh, this has been a very long set of tutorials showing how it can be used. I hope this helps matters. Uh, haven't had a lot of activity on Steam from this, and I haven't been doing any real marketing of it, so, uh, you know, if you like this tool, please use it, tell other people about it, or at least give us a thumbs up, a good review. If not, I'm willing to listen to your gripes and do something about them, but at some level, this is just a side project for me, and I'm happy to make a little money off it, but ultimately, uh, it's, it just didn't take off like I had hoped. Doesn't mean that it won't be useful to people. And I never expected it to be a million dollars anyway. I was just, you know, surprised that nobody got back in six months. Or even complained that it didn't work. So, uh, it, it's good that somebody finally did. And now we can move on from that. So, uh, happy making games, guys. And uh, we'll see you in 2019.